Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beard Guys video. My name is Ben. Today we are looking at the new premium tank, the IS-3A, the Fatherland, uh, interestingly named uh, Earnable Red Tier 8 Premium Tank. So this is brand new. You can earn it through doing some ops, which we'll go over in a minute when we're watching some gameplay. And we'll also talk about the pricing and how you can buy it if you're completely mad and want to buy it instead. Uh, but first we'll have a real quick look at the stats and then we'll jump in and look at some gameplay. So I'm not going to go in the stats in huge detail, but I'll bring them all up on screen. So if you do want to go through them in your own time, you can pause it, you can have a look, you can read all about it. But the gist of this thing is it's basically an IS-3. It's got a slightly quicker rate of fire than the standard IS-3. It's got very similar pen and damage, uh, but it's got worse gun handling. So pretty much an IS-3. It doesn't get preferential matchmaking. In fact, the a replay you're about to see is going to be a tier 10 game. It has pretty much the same armor profile as the standard IS-3, but it does have a much lower power to weight ratio. So you can, so you can see there it's got 520 horsepower engine, so you can expect it to be a little bit slower than your standard Tech Tree IS-3. So I've had to stick a pretty rubbish crew in here. I don't have any, this is on my PS4 account, by the way. Thanks to Wargaming for lending us this one. It is going back to them. I do not get to keep it. Uh, I have to earn it like the rest of you, but I don't have any Soviet tanks really on my PS4 account. So I've got this terrible crew, uh, Edward Dragon, who's got a pretty cool name, but he has no sixth sense. So um, he's not much use to me. Looks wise, it's pretty cool looking, I think. I mean, compared to a lot of the weird kind of novelty tanks they've done, uh, I prefer it being a fairly matte color. Uh, to some of the other ones, especially the Motherland. I think it looks a lot better than the Motherland. Plus, it doesn't have any kind of weird stuff written on it too much. You know, knowing Wargaming, you'd expect it to say, like, Fatherland in huge writing along the gun barrel along the side or something. But thankfully, it doesn't. So, uh, yeah, it's not too bad looking, you know, if you want a red tank uh, with some yellow stuff on it. Then, well, there you go. Comes the big chain on the back. What more could you want? So here we go with some Fatherland gameplay. Now I didn't have too much time to grind out any incredible games for you guys, but um, I did have time to do three or four, and funnily enough, this was my first tier 10 game, uh, and it's probably the best of the bunch, even though it does require firing off a few Prem shells at the beginning. So how do you earn this tank for free? Well, you have to collect five of these medals that are called Fatherland medals, and you get those by doing 500 damage in a Soviet tank that is tier 3 or higher but what you have to do basically is you, once you get 500 damage or more in a soviet tier 3 or higher tank you then get one of a selection of random prizes and one of those could be one of these medals once you accumulate five of these medals you get the tank the other things you can get are stuff like silver xp and crew xp and there's some pretty good bonuses in their own right which i think have been kind of undersold so you know, keep that in mind when you're grinding away. If you're getting frustrated, keep in mind you're also earning some other nice little boosts on the way. We've done a bit of research today. I wanted to leave the video till tonight because I wanted to get an idea of maybe how hard it was to get this tank. And I've been crawling the forums today. We've been asking for feedback from the community on Discord and on Twitter to get an idea of how long it's taken people to get these medals. I think we're looking at something like maybe a sort of 5 to 10% drop rate for each game you get of getting one of these medals the vast majority of the people we've asked that have given us feedback got their first medal within their 10 first 10 to 15 games i know there's people out there who are going to say oh i've had 30 games and not got a single medal and that's true you know that could happen that's how odds work you know some people might play two games get a medal some people might play 30 games not get one i saw someone post earlier saying that they played took them 30 games to get their first medal then they got their second on 32 so it could be really tough for you, it could be really easy. I've seen two people get it so far, one of them got it after about 38 games, one of them got it after 60 games. I think both those guys are pretty lucky, certainly the first one. By my reckoning, I think it's probably going to take anywhere between 50 to 100 games to get this. Uh, that is games with 500 uh, damage or more in the appropriate tank, so 500 drops, 500 drops, 50 drops. So keep that in mind, I think if you go over 100 you're going to be really unlucky, but you know, that might happen. If, however, you decide that you want to buy this tank, uh, then you're probably going to be in the doghouse with uh, the missus for quite some time because it is absolutely horrifically expensive. It is the most overpriced, ridiculously expensive tier 8 premium I think I've ever sold, seen, seen sold on World of Tanks. It is, if you want to buy the ultimate bundle, and you expect the ultimate bundles to be expensive, you know there's a mega with the motherland and the fatherland together, that's 26,000 gold. A lot of gold, but um, you know, you expect that. The ultimate, 17,500-ish, 
gold, you know, okay, it's the ultimate bundle. You scroll down, you get to the base bundle, 15,800 gold for a tier 8 premium tank. Now, the only other tier 8 premium tank that is priced like that on the Tankpedia is the Liberté, um, which I'm not sure has ever actually been sold at that price. I'm pretty sure it's only at that price on the Tankpedia, so they can claim huge discounts when they do offer it on sale. Um, it's certainly far more than the thing's worth. But, um, yeah, considering I think the most expensive tech tree tier 8 premium is, what, 12k maybe for the T34, something like that? Uh, and this is way, way more. So it's horrifically overpriced. I do not recommend buying it whatsoever. Um, go and earn it for free. Uh, it does suck, you know, if you're busy. It's only op The op's only on till 8 a.m. GMT on the 1st of March. So that is uh, next Wednesday. So you could do it over Tuesday night as well, UK time. But a uh, pretty short one, you know, if you don't have time to grind out, you're probably not going to want to buy it because it's crazy expensive. Why do you, why would you want to buy it? Well, you know, if you really like the IS-3 and you need a Soviet premium tank, crew trainer, maybe something to make some silver, it's not a bad shout. Play-wise, it plays just like the IS-3, really. The differences are pretty small. Uh, I don't think you're going to find a huge amount of difference there. The gun handling's probably going to be a little bit annoying to maybe some people who play a lot of IS-3. But obviously, you know, you have the other benefits of being a premium tank, so you can make some nice silver and you can train up your crews. Personally, I've been playing the game for three years. I've got a crap ton of uh, Soviet premium tanks, so I'm not too bothered about getting it, but I am going to try and uh, unlock it myself through doing the ops. Hopefully on Sunday night is the only time uh, I'm going to be able to play. Over the next few days is going to be kind of tough. I think uh, your best bet is to play this in some lower tier tanks. I did a few games when I got home from work today. Every game was complete Soviet tank games. Tons of Soviet heavy tanks. Like I did a game before this one that I didn't put up that was on Mountain Pass. And it was pretty much just all IS-3s and KV-4s and, uh, and a few IS-6s. So there's a lot of armor rolling around. There you go. This is what happens when you drive a tank with no sixth sense. But um, you see what we, how we did on tier 10 game. This was the best. I did three or four games. This was the first tier 10 one. Uh, ends up being the best of the bunch. And look at this for a snapshot. Way with snapshot pen, a uh, an IS-7 with standard rounds. You know, notice we also get APCR rounds as standard ammunition on the tank, which is nice to have because it means it gives it a very high shell velocity, which is always nice. So just skipping on to the end of the battle, we do actually manage to win. There is one dude left. They can't quite kill him. He's on 177 health. And the clock runs out, so we win. They had four tanks remaining, so sadly he doesn't get a scrub Kolobanovs. But uh, we, we do get the win. We got 2,000 damage, 2,003 assisted, and a nice amount of blocks. And we actually came top. Not a beast game by any measure, but um, I'm pretty chuffed with that for just diving in for four games. Shout out to Dima on the other team. Got 7.5k in the IS-7. So, you know, overall, not a bad tank. I'm not especially uh, blown away with how they've done the ops. I think the drops are a nice thing that you get, but the way the op is done, you know, doing 500 damage in a game is really just kind of that's like avoiding a fail game and it shouldn't be hard like 500 damage is pretty much one shot in a lot of tier 8 9 and 10 soviet tanks so once you've done 500 damage it doesn't really encourage you to do anything after that you can do whatever you want it doesn't matter if you win if you lose if you do 8k damage or if you do 501 damage uh yeah so it's not great i think it's probably the the most poorly uh poorly structured up that they've done so far for owning a tank i like having the free drops and stuff and you know it's cool to get free tanks but um i think it's pretty poorly uh thought through i think maybe they should have put it so you have to win as well five round damage and win but you know i guess then everyone will moan about bad teams making them lose because you know it's always the bad team's fault it's never your fault um but then i don't know maybe you could have made it a thousand damage a game so it made you give you a little bit of something to try for rather than 500 you know what's that nada Anyway, my little thoughts on the ops for you there. So there you go. That is the IS-3A slash the Fatherland. A little bit of information on it for you. I hope you found that useful. My name is Ben. We are the Beard Guys, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.